Assassination has been a harsh and powerful tool of power throughout history, used to kill rivals and change the fate of nations. Assassinations have left an unmistakable mark on human history, from the bloody coups of the ancient world to the more nuanced political maneuverings of modern times. Assassinations were prevalent in the ancient world, where political power was frequently won and lost on the battlefield. In this video, we will look at three of the most stunning assassinations in ancient history, where kings, emperors, and leaders were assassinated in their prime, leaving legacy of murder and intrigue. These assassinations, from the inexplicable deaths of great figures to the cruel betrayals of loyal allies, serve as a reminder of the dark side of human nature and the terrible cost of power. Julius Caesar was a Roman statesman and military general who was killed on March 15, 44 BC. His expanding influence and popularity among the people of Rome, mixed with his unrivaled ambition, made him a target. He had, in particular, enraged much of the senatorial class, who considered him a threat to Rome's stability. They wanted him gone. So a group of senators led by Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius Longinus plotted to assassinate Caesar in order to restore the Republic to its former grandeur. It is thought that up to 60 senators were involved in the plot. Caesar was supposed to attend a Senate meeting in the theater of Pompey on the Ides of March, 44 BC. Several of the conspirators approached him as he arrived, pretending to beseech him for the return of an exiled senator. As they surrounded Caesar, they drew their daggers and began stabbing him. Senator Casca, the exiled senator's brother, was the first to strike. When Caesar dodged Casca's first attempt, the other senators rushed to his aid stabbing him 23 times. Suetonius, a Roman physician, later said that only one wound was fatal. The death of Caesar assured in a period of political upheaval and civil conflict in Rome as groups supporting and opposing him vied for power. However, Caesar's influence would live on and his name would come to be associated with ambition, power, and the fate of empires. Weddings are supposed to be joyous occasions, but not for Philip II of Macedon, the father of Alexander the Great, who was assassinated by one of his bodyguards at his daughter's wedding. It happened in October 336 BC, while Philip was in Egi, his kingdom's capital, for his daughter's wedding. Pausanias of Orestes, one of the king's bodyguards, attacked him as he entered the town's theater unprotected. The king had decided to go unprotected in order to seem approachable in front of the Greek diplomats and dignitaries in attendance at the wedding. This proved to be a minor oversight. Pausania stabbed the vulnerable king in the ribs, instantly killing him. The assassin then attempted to flee the crime scene but was pursued by three of the king's other bodyguards. His horse stumbled over some vines during the chase, and Pausanias fell to the ground. The other bodyguards made sure he didn't get up. The most perplexing aspect of Philip II's death is that no one knows why he was slain. Some ancient historians speculated that Pausanias was upset by the king and desired vengeance, while others blamed Alexander and his mother. 
Modern historians have done a fair job of pointing out flaws in each of these arguments, but they are still no closer to presenting a satisfactory response. Whatever the reality, Philip II's assassination was a significant event in ancient Macedonian history. It resulted in a period of instability and conflict, which was eventually ended by Alexander the Great's emergence. Alexander went on to conquer most of the known globe and become one of history's most famous military leaders. Caligula reigned as the third Roman emperor from 37 to 41 AD. His rule is well known for his unpredictable conduct, harshness, and excess. For good reason, he's known as Rome's maddest king. It should come as no surprise that he was assassinated, given his legacy. Initially, he had the backing of the Roman people, Caligula was regarded as a breath of fresh air following Tiberius' dark and authoritarian reign. This did not last long. Caligula displayed evidence of mental instability, like psychosis, delusions of grandeur, and sadism, early in his reign. Caligula had numerous prominent Romans executed including senators and even members of his own royal family. On top of that, he reveled in a wide range of weird and severe public humiliations. It suddenly got excessive. Caligula was relocating to Alexandria, Egypt, where he intended to be adored as a god. The prospect of Rome losing its emperor and thus its political authority was simply too much for the Senate to stomach. The Praetorian Guard, tasked with defending the Emperor, swooped in. The Praetorian Guard, led by Cassius Sharia, a prominent member, assassinated Caligula in his mansion in 41 AD. Following Caligula's death, the Senate installed his uncle, Claudius, as emperor. Claudius would reign over Rome for more than a decade, presiding over an era of relative peace and prosperity. As we ponder these three tragic ancient world assassinations, we are reminded of the fragility of power and the extent to which people will go to achieve and keep it. These assassinations, whether by betrayal, poison, or violence, illustrate the dark side of humanity and the fatal repercussions of political ambition. Despite their untimely deaths, several of these assassinations could be considered failures. In most cases, the names of the victims are known in history, although many of the conspirators are mostly forgotten. Furthermore, these crimes frequently resulted in periods of instability, and those who acquired power via murder and treason were frequently deposed. 